Good afternoon. I'm Randy Deer, and I'd like to welcome you to the June 25th Code Enforcement and Nuisance Board. Um, let's uh, call to order, please. Deer? Yes. Simpson? Here. Deerbone? Wilder? Thomas? I would like to go ahead and swear our staff in, please. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Okay. I'd like to take just a moment before we get started uh, to honor our good, um, our good friend and former board member, Dr. Jerry Wilder. Jerry passed away Thursday morning, and uh, his... Um, memorial service was this afternoon and I can just tell you not only I was a colleague of uh, with Jerry at the university for a lot of years but uh, more than that Jerry was a mighty fine man he was very honorable he was very truthful he was very kind and he definitely had a heart for service and a heart for people so I personally uh, am going to miss Jerry as a friend but also he was an excellent board member for this uh, for this uh, board. So, would any of my colleagues have anything that they'd like to say about Dr. Wilder? And then we'll end up with a moment of silence before we start this meeting. Jerry Wilder uh, and I uh, were in classmates at Western. That means I'm old. Uh, we played football together. We done a lot of things together. Jerry has been sick off and on for about 15 years, different illnesses, serious illnesses, but he kept going, kept doing things. I can't think of anybody that has a bad thought or any animosity against Jerry Wilder, a true veteran, soldier, citizen, and contrib contributes to our country and to our city. He will be missed. Uh, Dr. Wilder was the Vice President of Student Affairs at Western for many years. And there were a lot of people at the service today and what the others said amounted to uh, stating that he treated his students with respect and compassion. My observation on this board is that he treated all who came before the board with the same respect and compassion. Okay, with that, I'd like to have a moment of silence in memory of Dr. Jerry Wilder. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on. We need to approve the minutes of the May 28th meeting. Are there any additions, deletions, corrections uh, for, the, for the May 28th meeting? I move to approve the minutes as presented. Second. Simpson, Thomas, Deer? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Okay, our um, hearing agenda, case number one, uh, case 2019-759, citation 2019-1582.5, it's 475 Three Springs Road, owner Bobby and Drusilla Belcher, respondent Bobby Belcher from BJ Electric, officer um, Shargarowski. This case is the result of a roaming inspection that was conducted in January of 2019. Uh, after meeting with Code Enforcement Coordinator James Knapper, reviewing the property and researching past cases and complaints at this location, a notice of violation was sent on the 1st of February of this year. During the inspection and subsequent research, the following violations were noted and sent on the notice of violation. 
inoperable, unlicensed, and junk vehicles, and vehicles improperly parked, stored, not on proper improved parking surface. A, uh, the listed compliance reinspection date on the notice of violation was March 1st of 2019. In addition to the notice of violation, aerial photos of the last 10 years were sent showing that grass was covering the parking surface and there was no movement of vehicles for at least that length of time. Uh, the pictures on the screen in front of you are from uh, the research done in, in January and um, the subsequent notice of violation that was sent out. These are two aerial photographs for comparison. The top one is from May of 2008 and the bottom is February of 2019. Additionally, this is the back side of the property showing an eight-year difference there with no movement of vehicles and uh, little to no maintenance there of the parking surface. On uh, February 5th of 2019, I received a voicemail from the property owner, Mr. Belcher. Uh, he stated that he had owned the lot for 30 years. He had poured 400 tons of rock and gravel for the parking surface and all of the vehicles were registered and licensed. The same day, uh, I made phone contact with Mr. Belcher and we had a positive and cooperative discussion. Uh, I explained the code within the city and that while all the vehicles might be registered, they're not operable. They have flat tires and they're defined as junk vehicles because they have not moved uh, for the last 10 to 15 years in addition to, uh, to the other issues as stated. I also uh, told him that the back of the panel trucks facing Barnwood Court are in disrepair and the residents there have to look out their windows to see the back of those, uh, those trucks all the time. It's an eyesore for the otherwise well-kept uh, surrounding properties and ongoing development on that side of town. Uh, regarding the parking surface, I explained that pouring gravel many years ago would suffice as having a proper base of gravel at the time, uh, but that without any maintenance for 10 years, the lot is no longer considered to be an improved parking surface. Photographs over many years, as well as the current state of the property, show that it's not being properly maintained as a parking lot. It looks nothing like similar or surrounding parking lots, and it has more grass than gravel upon which the vehicles are parked. Uh, Mr. Belcher then admitted that, uh, that he had some sentimental feelings about the vehicles, uh, but finally agreed that it was time for them to move on. Uh, the plan that we had co cooperatively formulated during the phone call was that over a 90-day period, uh, he was going to list some of the vehicles for sale and move some of them closer to the road, thereby showing that they were operable. Uh, he was also going to place for sale signs in their windows. And um, near the end of that 90-day period, Mr. Belcher suggested that he could contact an auction company uh, to sell the remainder of whatever vehicles hadn't sold by that time and also said that he could haul some vehicles to his farm in Woodburn and store them there to avoid being in violation of city ordinance. Uh, I met with Code Enforcement Coordinator Knapper the following day to explain this plan. And while there was some initial concern about a 90-day time frame, it was deemed to be fair to all parties involved to finally bring this property into compliance. On the 12th of March, I was at an immediately adjacent property for an unrelated inspection um, around apartment buildings with the president of that complex's homeowners association. While there, the HOA president asked if the property was compliant with code and that it had been an eyesore and a danger to persons in the surrounding area for many years. While she and I were walking around the apartments, there were various noises coming from some of the trucks and trailers, and she stated that different types of animals had taken up residence in the vehicles and trailers over the years, and that wildlife and vehicles are a safety concern, especially to kids uh, in the area. She was concerned that the overall disrepair of the property was a magnet for criminal activity. Uh, these are some pictures from March 12th uh, at the adjacent property On June 6th, I reinspected the property and found it was still in violation. A citation was issued on that date and posted to the property, as well as sent by first class and certified mail to the PVA listed owner and address. Photographs were taken of the citation in the property at the time it was posted. The listed compliance date of the 17th of June was postponed due to the filed appeal. Uh, in addition to the items on the notice of violation, added to the citation were uh, the definition of a vehicle machinery or parts recycler, screening requirements for junk vehicles and machinery, duty of maintenance of private property, accumulation of junk, scrap metal, junk vehicles, and tires stored or located outdoors. The following pictures are from the day that the citation was issued and posted on the property. As you can see, the vehicles are more or less in the same state as were the trailers. Uh, the top right picture here gives you an idea of how close the apartments are to this lot on the one side of the property. 
Um, you can also see there where some of the trailers have been there so long it looks like the tree has pretty much grown around the trailer. Again, the majority of uh, vehicles, if not all of them, have flat tires and are otherwise inoperable. There's uh, fencing material, uh, piles of metal, uh, disrepair to many of the vehicles, broken windows, truck doors. Uh, I was not able to see any vehicles that had or were displaying uh, proper license. All of them either were expired. As you can see, one of these is from 2007, so about 12 years expired. A uh, large pile of metal that's there as well as, again, several inoperable vehicles. This is as of today, uh, 25th of June 2019, property is still in violation. There are at least 12 inoperable, unlicensed, and or junk vehicles. There are five unused cargo containers and trailers and accumulated metal and junk, and the case has been open 143 days. And again, these pictures of the disrepair of trailers, flat tires. Um, today there were several cats um, while I was trying to take pictures of the property. And again, all of the vehicles that pretty much haven't moved for at least 10 or longer years. Okay, thank you. Uh, is Mr. Belcher here? Yes. I need to swear you in, sir. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I will. Okay. Uh, I purchased that property in 88. Uh, I am grandfathered in on it, and y'all's license, uh, your, your enforcement was May 21st, 1991. I, I was there three or four years. I was there before those apartments was built. I think before the health department was built. But anyway, I was one of the first ones out there, and all I'm asking is to be grandfathered in, or be with y'all, but I am grandfathered in on some stuff that wouldn't. Uh, and uh, it's the same electrical business. I had to go to the courthouse three times a year. I'm, I put, um, in, I've, I've taken, that this part of them, I got three of them in here, I, uh, three different times. Um, I do have my master's. I have state electrical contractor. Um, I also have city with a number of one, one, two, which is one of the first ones ever had one down there. And it's a city con electrical contractor. And, and I have pictures of my trucks inside that we use as of today. Uh, if y'all want to look, I got, boy, you can look at them each end if y'all are not interested in them but they're, they're not junk trucks, it's junk stuff out back, but that property is grandfathered in. I had two of those hemp, you wanna give them things start on each end there. And they're all, they're all the trucks that's inside that building. I have another warehouse in Woodburn that has similar trucks. Uh, okay. Yeah. So we was there a long time for that your city planning zoning come into law. In fact, that we was there for that apartment was there, or the health department. We was one of the first ones built on the lot out there. And the building was built when I bought it in 88. And those trucks inside, we use them all the time. We done work for Simitomo. We done all their work in Morgantown, Scottsville, Edmonton, uh, Southeastern Display, Rhines. We done Tennessee and Kentucky, White Castle, we, we build signs, put them up and uh, with my construction business. And, and I, it, it, uh, like I said, I've already been grandfathered in on one at Woodburn. And I don't understand why, you know, I need them up here. Look like y'all would grandfather it in, whatever it need be done, because I was there a long time before your law came into force. I think, uh, Mr. Belcher, I, 
based upon the pictures that I see, all of those pictures are on the inside. Inside, well, that's where my that's trucks correct. are inside. I'm not worried about them on the outside because don't have any place to put them. I've got, uh, well, I, I probably got at least, and I'm trying to sell them right now. To, I, I think somebody said we put size, but this is this is one of the pages, and uh, and I, and it's a 2018. Uh, what are, you looking at, what are you looking at? What are you looking at, Mr. Belcher? It's a taxes where I come to the courthouse and they fill the taxes out and I pay okay. the taxes and, and I can't license all of them. If you see some of these, some of them, I have licensed them up here top. There's the trucks like in the, inside that building. Um, and and I, I, you know, I just don't understand why that it wasn't grandfathered in or somebody checked when we bought the property. We bought it in, in 88 when I bought it and, and we moved in immediately. That one trailer you're showing, it, it's an 88 model and we put it in practically brand new. And uh, those others, we, we put all, store all our supply in there. Those build, that building is crammed full of trucks, air compressors, trenchers, uh, back, uh, well, and back holes in the other building, down in back hole in the other, in Woodburn. But, um, Mr. Belcher, it seems to me that the, that the uh, violations are for the exterior part, as I just mentioned, as opposed to the interior. Is that correct, Brad? Are the trucks that you're talking about, are they operable? They are if you, you put batteries in. Those people out there, they come with the, and stole the batteries out of them, and they, they don't just take the post off. They cut the cable, so we're going then to have Then they're to, inoperable, is that correct? They will if you put a battery in, yes. We drove them in there. But we are going to sell them and get rid of them. I mean, that, I, I'd like to know that. I mean, it's not going to continue to stay out there. We got signs in every dash wanting to sell all those, but I got nothing in my building I want to sell. I mean, it, it, that's. Counselor, what's the applicability of being grandfathered in to 1988 versus 91? Well, I'm going to let Mr. Peterson correct me, but here's my opinion about it. As to the use, if he is grandfathered in on to the use, it can continue to be used. But as to the conformity with city ordinances, it still has to comply with city ordinances as to operable and inoperable uh, automobiles, as to driveways and things of that nature. What he's talking about is a planning and zoning issue. Sometimes we talk about uh, a garage that's in the middle of a residential zone that's agricultural, but it's a commercial use, and it was a commercial use in 1968. Uh, I believe the city adopted in 69, did they not, Mr. Peterson? Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, they, they, close they, to that. We've had the, zoning since the 50s. So. Yeah, it, it, I, I think when we're talking about this particular area, it's 1969. So, I, I don't dispute that his use would be grandfathered, perhaps, but that's not the, that's not the issue. Belcher, your, uh, your character and your responsibility and commitment to our community is not in question at all. You, you've contributed a lot to our community and our city, and we appreciate that. I, I started to work when the EPB built, we started over here across the street, we built a new building down, and I, I left VGMU in 83, and that's when I got my license, uh, the VJ Electric, and license in 83. And, and, I, and I've been, uh, like I said, we've, we've had, a, we don't even have to advertise because we've got a truck somewhere at all time. The pictures y'all looking at our trucks inside there, and they're definitely not junk trucks, and they've been, they've been used often, but those trucks on the outside, all I got to do is put a battery in them and put you know, on, uh, a cable on the end of it, and we can start them up and move them. But, uh, you know. I, I, yes, sir. I think that that's, Officer uh, Brad, that's basically what we want, isn't it? We want them moved. And I, the code doesn't require that he move or remove them. The code requires that they be operable and licensed. Uh, I would contest that putting a battery in, in some of these trucks that have rims all the way down into the mud for however many years probably need a little more work than just putting a battery in them. But regardless, the code doesn't require that they be moved, uh, as uh, Mr. Broderick alluded to, that 
this is not a zoning issue. We're not saying he can't have the trucks there. They just can't be junk trucks. They have to be operable, movable, uh, and representative of the surrounding properties. And, and to kind of maybe shed a little light on that, I think one of the things, and this was many months ago that Mr. Belcher and I had spoken about, when he brought up the issue of being grandfathered in, uh, I made the example, and it might not be the best example, that just because you have a house that was built in the 50s or the 70s or the 1800s doesn't mean you can have broken windows and no front door uh, because code doesn't have uh, any sort of grandfather principle. So what we're trying to bring the property up to code is just to make sure that, that there aren't piles of metal, which there are in several places, there aren't cats and possums and whatever other animals that are living uh, directly adjacent to apartment buildings and uh, a brand new uh, IGA station there and all the other development going on up and down that road. And, and um, you know, again, uh, I could not find a vehicle that had aired up tires. Uh, I mean, at least all of them that, that I could observe both uh, when the citation was issued and again today all have uh, flat tires. Um, there's one that has a, or I guess maybe two in that picture that have a for sale sign in the window. Um, but the rest of them have not moved in, in well over 11 or 15 years or however old those pictures are. Belcher, uh, we've been at this 143 days and you've made some representations. You're trying to sell or you're going to auction or you're going to have them towed off. Well, we, uh, let, let me I finish. just let me like finish, sir. Please, let me finish. Clear. How long would it take you in addition to 143 days to get this up to standards? I just assumed I was grandfathered in. I do have other property in Woodburn that's grandfathered in, uh, and, and it with the same ordinance that y'all have. They Woodburn uh, got y'all's ordinance, and they put it on their books, and that's what they went in Woodburn. We was up at uh, Chamber of Commerce up here, and, and they grandfathered the property in and down there. And of course, uh, it, it didn't have trucks like this, it wasn't working. I mean, and I agree that, that we need to do something. And, but uh, I called, I don't know who the police officer was that retired and, and are you the one? I, I've called them people two times after January 1 when they come out there and looked at the truck and wrote me up. Nobody would call me back. I asked him to return my call. And then whoever the guy was that done the writing, he put his mobile number in it. I would call that mobile number. He wouldn't call me back. So I just assumed that I was grandfathered in, but I really knew we would need to. And I put lots of the for sale signs, I think, in at least three fourths of those trucks, and the rest of them for sale, too, that, that's outside. But those trailers, that, I can't do my job without my stuff that I got stored in those trailers. And they've complained about those, but you know, uh, it, well, it looks like you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. I don't know. How many employees do you have right now today? I, I lost my wife two, two and a little over two years ago. And when I lost her, uh, I was over 200 pounds. I'm down to 162 pounds. I just really felt bad. And that's another reason why that I wanted to try to get rid of, you know, my, all the trucks. Not, not the good trucks I got in. I've got two warehouses. We have never had a bill sent from 475 Three Springs Road. It all comes to 1900 Woodburn Island Springs Road, and that's where we mail our bills out. I've got <coughs> an office in both both places, one up there, and there's one down there in my home. Um, and I just assumed that, you know, that we'd be grandfathered in just like we are at Woodburn. How many employees do you have today? I, I just have one that helps me today, just me. and. But uh, we, do, we have done all the southeastern display, all them big billboards you see. I've got those big trucks that drills the holes there inside the building. I'm sure you've seen the pictures of them. How many, how many active contracts do you have today, construction or building or replacement or whatever? After I lost my wife, I, I, just, I, I hadn't done anything. But like I said, I did all the Sumatomos. We did Morgantown, Edmonton, Godspool, Glasgow, Bowling Green. We did. The Ryan stores, we did uh, uh, Waffle Houses. I had Waffle Houses in Tennessee and Kentucky and, and Elizabeth Town. We, we've done them for I don't know how long. Uh, and I've been doing some of it myself, but you know, you just, you just, you just stress things so far. I've had a pretty rough time about my wife, I tell you. I've got a little shit <coughs> dog, and we live in a 10,000 square house there in 240. 
and it does, it's not too good at nighttime sometimes. At one person? One person. Do, now, do you, do you lease out the vehicles that, and the equipment that run? Oh, I don't lease anything. You can't lease something like that out. If you do, if you do you're going to be liability with it, and, and you're going to be in the courthouse for that. Hamp, sure. when did you say that the, this ordinance went in, in law? This ordinance, as we know it today, started in 1998. I believe it was amended again in 2012. It was 2002 what we got on telephone. It, yeah. it was updated. But uh, I just assumed that those trucks was grandfathered in sitting out there, even though they're, they're not operable or whatever. If property's grandfathered, then, then you, you, you don't have any right to come out and tell a person what he can do or not do. But at the same time, whenever they came, whoever he is, it doesn't make any difference. They took six months before they broke me up again. And I just assumed that they read when I bought that property. I was there before those apartments went in. I was there before the health department, I'm pretty sure. But uh, we've been there ever since. Uh, the, and, uh, and I do have my contractors stay. I have state electrical ma uh, contractors. I have a, a master's electrical license. And uh, we yes, still. Sir. We Mr. still have calls. Mr. Belcher, I, I, as, as Delane had said, I don't think anybody's questioning your integrity of what you do and how you run your business. That, that's not the reason we're here. Well, I, and, I watch Miss Judy sometimes court things, and, and, and they, they make sure that you take a camera and take a picture, and that's the reason why I took these pictures, to show you that my truck's in that building, and we can't get anything else in there. I've got two big trenchers. Two big right. 180 air compressors, and we got bucket trucks, and I've got uh, two big tandem duck bucket truck, uh, digger trucks in there. We we put signs up, and, and that's what that steel stuff laying around for. I had to have it for the billboards and stuff like that. And um, uh, but we we didn't have to advertise because, like I said, we had a truck or we were somewhere every day. It didn't make any difference during the week. Mr. Uh, Deer. Uh, I believe that there's someone from the, the neighborhood here as well that wanted to, or maybe a couple of folks from the neighborhood that wanted to speak about the property as well, um, if, uh, if the board would any, allow. Do you have anything else at this time you'd like to share with us, Mr. Belcher, that we haven't covered? Yeah, I think I've told you about anything. Like I said, I am okay. a veteran. I served my time in the 50s, uh, and then I, and I came to work, like I said, for EPB, and we went to Boji, Bowling Green Municipal Utility, and I left him in 83 and I got my own license and started uh, doing exactly about what I told you I've been doing. And we, of course, we hadn't stopped. Thank you, sir. It, uh, uh, the fact that I was there on your Christmas day out, I don't know where y'all remember that or not, but anyway, we, we was back on in about six or seven hours. We were all towns around us for three and four days getting the stuff back on. We just had a big transformer breaker blowed out and we had to double switch in the Bowling Green primary and, and get them back. You, you just couldn't put the same things back on the same transform. It had to be the same one, go back to the same place. But, uh, uh, all right, if we, have, if we have someone else, thank you, Mr. Belcher. If we have someone else, do we have anybody else that needs to speak on this issue? Okay. Mr. Belcher, we may call you back up, so just have a seat. Okay. Come up, state your Joe, name, and then. Everything. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, help you, God. Absolutely. Okay. What's your name, please? Jennifer Rush Sims, and I'm the majority owner of the apartments uh, next door. Get closer to the microphone. <clears throat> Sorry, I said I'm Jennifer Rush Sims, and I'm the majority owner of the apartments next door, and I'm also the president of the homeowners association. And I guess we um, actually, we were cited as well when um, officer was making some things, he, we were cited as well. And, and this has been an eyesore ever since we've owned them. Um, we have problems with, with possums coming over, feral cats. You know, it's embarrassing when you're renting apartments. I mean, again, I don't think anybody wants this next door to their home. And I do understand Mr. Belcher, it's his property, and I, I really understand that. But in the same token, 
it's really kind of not fair to the people that live there that that's what they look at. Um, some of the stuff is so far over on the fence, we had to do a several thousand dollar repair on just the one exterior fence, uh, what you see the metal. It leans against, the trees do. Um, so as I get that his interior things are all good, we just really would like to see the exteriors gone. It's, it's tough to look at when you drive down the road and like I said, I don't think there's any question. I mean, I even would think if you'd ask Mr. Belcher, does he want this in the yard adjacent to his house? I don't think he would. Yes, ma'am. No. Thanks. Uh, one, one question, though. Did you get inside, inside the buildings? Case is purely uh, the exterior of the property. We have no no case whatsoever. No, on we're, the not, we're not talking about the trucks that Mr. Belch was talking about that are running and equipment. I don't know anything about the inside of the buildings whatsoever. Okay, I'm ready to make a motion. Unless you got something else you want to do. No, go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to uphold the citation and the fine in the amount of $104. Second. Simpson, Thomas, Deer. Yes. Simpson. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Mr. Belcher, if you need some help uh, from this office, maybe getting names of people to help you auction or whatever you need to do, uh, we're here to help you if we can. You know, I would like to change this thing is planning from apartment complex. They pulled my fence down on both ends. They mashed it down. They tore the boards off. She's complaining about having to put those boards back. And and they're they're really the cause of me being up here because we kept the yard, we keep it mowed, we mow it twice a month, every month, all summer. We and uh, and those trucks really does need to be moved out. But at the same time, if you tell me to move my trailers, then I'll have to shut my business down for the simple reason why that's where my material and stuff's at. That's where we use it for the signs. And, the, and of course, I, I, I'm construction and I also electrical. Uh, and, you know, and on top, I just left out there. And I think I picked up six or seven beer bottles that came from the apartment complex in front of my building cans and paper and you never seen anything. That tree trimming truck, ain't no telling how many pieces of paper I got in the back of it that I picked up. And and they if you if they took a picture of my fence, they tear it down at both ends. They tore it down behind that thing. The truck y'all had on had on the back, the back end kicked out. The rain had blowed in there and, and rotten that a little bit. Those kids from that apartment complex kicked that back end they in and they and the policemen's had been out there two or three times, and I had to replace four or five windows where the kids got on the hoods, stomped the windshields out. Now, they, now they came back when the, they were building a new road through there, and they got stakes from over the health department, and they busted the Coast Guard mirrors. And so, and, uh, uh, but, you know, I think the people in the apartment needs, needs to be taking care of some of the people they're renting to because, really, uh, they're, they're as much blame as I am, and they, they, they have tore the fence down on, on both corners in the back. I mean, just tore down. I put it back up, they tear it down. <coughs> uh, I put something on trucks, and, and they, they busted it off. Mr. Belcher, uh, you made the statement that they're the reason you're here. Uh, they are not the reason that you're here. This is a separate issue you're talking about here, so you need to take that up with the staff or someone else. So we're done with your issue here. Well, I was just listening to what she was saying. I didn't know who turned me in, but now I know who done it, and, and I won't forget about them either. Sir, Thank you, sir. Don't, don't threaten people, please. All righty. Okay. Let's go on case two. Case 2019-5235, citation 2019-9296. 1408 Sunrise Drive. 
owner uh, Said and Rasmina Hajdrafek. Is that correct? I'm sorry. I apologize for. I apologize for messing up the name. Right. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Um, this, actually, I've had a complaint that started in 2018 on this. Um, it was in September. And I've got a, a number of slides that will pretty much kind of show um, the complaint was operating an auto business in a residential area. And... Um, in 2018, August, pretty much Mr. Seed had cleaned up the area and I ended up um, giving him an NOV reference to parking in grass because he's moved as we go through the photos, uh, Brad, if you please. Um, the first photos that I've got up there show that all kinds of cars in disrepair, but there is a lot parking in the grass. So I, ended up as it progressed through August all the cars were vacated except for a few that was parked on the grass so the first um, complaint that I had referenced this was operating auto repair business but uh, he cleaned it up and through the NOV he en ended up moving the vehicles off the grass I thought the problem was solved however in 2019 um, I got a complaint, uh, it was April the 15th, and when I went through this time, it was operating an auto repair in a residential area also. And um, I did, I noticed a few things, that, that other slide that was just there, when I went through, there's a back end of a pickup truck on top of that truck, and then there's a wrecked vehicle in front of that uh, carport and a trailer back in the grass again. So, um, ended up sending an NOV reference to operating the, uh, that, that vehicle right there came back uh, not owned by Mr. Seed. And um, there was still different vehicles and back in the backyard was a few trailers parked but the NOV had that one of the recommendations was cease operating the the auto repair or apply for a future land use uh, amendment and a zone change because that's a residential area it's not commercial it's not for a auto repair or a body shop so um, anyway, when, when I sent certified mail of this NOV, uh, Mr. Seed came up to the office uh, May the 3rd, and uh, he told me he wasn't going to change or move the vehicles, get rid of his trailers, or register the vehicles in his name. It cost him $3,000 a piece if he did that. And that for me to do what I, whatever I'm going to do, and so the NOV was for 30 days, and it was up uh, June the 3rd. June 24th, which was yesterday, I cited uh, Mr. Seed with, the, um, with both parked in the grass and the operation of um, the commercial business in a multifamily uh, residential zone. No, sir. Yeah. Um, Mr. Seed? I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Okay. Go ahead. Well, uh, I don't know really how to start, where to start, but uh, it's a... Uh, the citation I got, it's for uh, I'm operating some kind of commercial business in my residence. As I called right after I got the letter, and I asked, uh, 
how many times they've been there inspecting that property, and I asked them, how many times you find me working on somebody's vehicle? There is no time that, that they ever catch me working, or there is maybe I work there, I don't know, maybe the whole year, maybe a month, just on my own vehicles. As uh, he just pointing out this truck right here that is not registered to me, but um, there is uh, somebody running and, and look at all the VIN numbers because they uh, they accusing me of doing something you know illegal like I think uh, like like I'm still in that cars or something, and uh, the pictures that he showed from future from I mean from before like before these right here, this is as of maybe today, but the pictures before that's that's all. Uh, they were just parked there maybe that day, when they, when they, but they're not parked there to stay there, the vehicles. And the parts on the trailer, it was just there, but I never work. I can't do such things right there. I have no lifts. The stuff I, I do, maybe like uh, repairing the cabs and stuff, I'll take it. You know, I have places where I take them to work on it. And I have, you know, people that pay that they do this stuff for me. Main thing maybe that I can do there is brake jobs, uh, clean up, you know, maybe interior and stuff, but I can never do major things, and there is no commercial business that I own ever. I used to be a truck driver, and this is my uh, hobby, and I, I get maybe several cars in a year to repair, you know, just as a hobby. As, like I said, I don't work there maybe one day a month, two, month, two days a month, you know, and uh, the vehicles, I have a paper that it belongs to me, and he tells me about, not just about this truck, he said, more vehicles are, like, he, he checked them all pretty much from my understanding, that the, all the vehicles have been checked, and they not belong to me. They, they belong to somebody else. And I said, well, go ahead, find the owners, and tell them they're here, they can pick them up. But I have a paper, so as of today, I have a picture of what it looked like as of today, and uh, what he sent me the letter last time, it was about the trailers. In the backyard, I do have a couple of trailers, it's better if I keep them in the backyard than bringing them up front right there, you know. I have enough uh, uh, parking, I can put them up front, but it's not gonna look good. It's better if I put them in the shade and uh, like everybody else does. They, the people that owns boats and stuff, you know, they put them in the backyard, you know. It's better not being there by the side of the street. I can gravel and make more parking, put the trailers up front, but there is, there is no commercial business that I ever run there. And I don't own commercial business at all. And I don't know what commercial business he's talking about, as as it said on that fine that for a commercial business. And also, I have another uh, violation for the other property, the next to it. It says uh, I need to remove uh, cars in the backyard. There is no vehicle in the backyard. So it never been. We can go right now and send somebody look at it. Is there any vehicle in the backyard? In the front, there is nothing parked in the grass. And same thing, he finding me for both uh, these properties. I just got this other one in uh, October, I think, of uh, last year. Then uh, same thing, like commercial business, operating commercial business, and having cars or trailers parked in the grass. He's not letting me have a trailer I, in the backyard. That's, I think it look better if I put him in the backyard. I can bring him up front. As of sometime, like that, this picture right there, that trailer, it look much better if it's in the backyard somewhere than being right there. I can put it right there in my, you know, driveway if, if that's a, what, what they want me to. But I'm here to say there is no commercial. I never own a commercial business. And like I said, I don't work maybe the whole year, one month on these vehicles. And they all belong to me. Whatever is on the parking right there, it's mine. How many vehicles do you own today? As of right now, maybe it's a four vehicles over there, I think. Where? Four vehicles probably. Where, right. where are they? On a both problem on a parking. I right have now? a picture. I have a picture. What now, of, are, are they any of these? They not, no, none of what. See that, uh, and these pictures. The first time I I met uh, uh, this officer, you know, it's about the parking right there where this uh, tree is. Uh, that was the very first time he was coming back and forth about yeah, right there the parking lot part. Just one parking. I use it, you know, sometime. I didn't use it all the time. And uh, this other, I don't know where he got these pictures. I never, he never showed me these pictures. He got them from, How I guess, long ago uh, do you think this was? Maybe, I don't know, not, not long, long ago, maybe in a year or so. Did, did he explain to you that you're not supposed to have a business in? in as I'm explaining, I never work on there as a business. That, that's just sitting there, that, that trailer. That car is not even belong, that, that was my cousin visiting me with, with the other car. That Jedi is 
the car that I'm driving as of today. This uh, Hummer, that's just my cousin, he parked there, you know, he could see it was a parking lot, but you know, people sometimes they just come in, they park on the grass and I don't have them report, but the, they don't stay there, park maybe that day or sometimes when it's maybe raining and I go to grocery store, I maybe get close to the house and maybe leave a car overnight or something, but they're not staying, you know, constantly parked on the grass. And I have enough parking, like I said, to park all the cars that they really stay in there at my properties as the trailers also, I can put them on a, on a gravel, I mean on a parking, but I put them in the backyard because everybody else keep trailers in the backyard. And I guess it's, it looks better. And I really tried my best to, to fit in this community, but I've been really harassed so many times, you know, that's the way I feel because I, I feel really discriminated right there at that property because I really trying my best, I trying hard, and uh, I don't know, do I have any rights really to the property except cutting the grass, living my life way somebody else wanted, or, you know, I don't know, I remodel one of the houses, I'm planning to remodel the other one, you know, if I get chance, but I can't do just so much, I can't do everything at one okay, time. Okay, so let me, let, me see if I, let me see if I understand this based on what I'm reading, what I'm hearing. So we've got several things here. We've got cars parked on grass. Is that correct? Inoperable. Right now, it's, it's the vehicles that's there that's not registered to Mr. C. That's inoperable. They're wrecked. Okay. Yeah. Uh, he has told me that he works maybe twice a month, two days out of the month on those. But that is a residential area, so you can't work on others' vehicles. I don't. They belongs to me. I have a paper. It belongs to me. The vehicle you we, we see it on a picture. I have a paper right here that it belongs to me. As I was telling, maybe it's not in my name, but it belongs to me. I I paid for it and I have a papers. It's mine. So not if it's not in your name. If well, they're not they're not in your name, it's not your vehicle. Okay. Well, like like I said, uh, they you all can find the owner and haven't told them if if it's not belongs to me then. That's what I can say. If that, if that vehicle's on your property, it's your responsibility. Yeah, and let me ask you this question. <clears throat> are you working on any of these vehicles? Are you getting paid to work on these? No. Are you getting paid no. to no. work on these no. vehicles? No, they they my own vehicles. So you're doing this as a service to people, for people? It belongs to me. Okay. I said I purchased them. I pay for them. I thought you just said they're not your vehicles. No, I, I said they, they're not registered in my name or they are belongs to me. They're not in my name, I said. Real confused. I am too. Well, I don't know, I mean. <clears throat> Counselor, can you help us on that? Now, do you have, are you saying they're titled in your name, sir? No, they're not titled. I purchase, when you purchase a vehicle, you know, I have all the papers. I have a titles for them, yes, I do. How many vehicles do you have in your name, in, by title, in your name? Uh, I think as of right now, I have that blue Jedi. It's in my name. 
Uh, that one I'm just driving as of right now. I'm trying. Go ahead. Are there any questions? Anybody else, Mr. C, do you have anything else you'd like to share before this? Board? I would like to really uh, get somebody to explain to me how I really need to live my life except being pushed, you know, just whenever they decided to because they were supposed to come back on the third as, as they come yesterday and they just left that fine. As I was telling them, it was a big issue. They made it about the trailer. They didn't make it about the cars. You know, they, he, they never mentioned I have a cars parking. That pictures I never seen them before from this person. And uh, he just bring them, you know, and I've been trying and trying. I, I applied for a surveyor like eight months ago, still waiting for them to finish up to mark my corners to build some kind of garage to make it, you know, look better as of some of the stuff, you know, that I would like to hide. I don't like to live maybe like that. I, I wish I can build me a garage and put the truck in garage, but that's all I can afford as of right now. I mean, yeah. and, and I'm not going to be working there at the parking lot on that vehicles. When I'm working on them, I'll take them some, like I said, I maybe change brakes or something, you know, simple at my house, but there is no vehicles that they come in that I charge in somebody for the service I do. It's my own personal vehicles, maybe my, my parents and, you know, my family, but it's, there is no do commercial. The, do you own the house? Yes, I own it. At your home? Yes, that's where I live. Mr. Deer, um, certainly this is a, a zoning case, but just to give you some information on the code enforcement side, we've had 23 code enforcement cases at this property as well, many of them being complaints about the same sort of thing of working on vehicles, and uh, there's an aerial photograph there in front of you on the monitors as well of, of the property uh, in question. Um, just to give you some additional information on our end. Point, point out the property on that. Is it the one with all the vehicles? Uh, this one, okay. Property here, and uh, this is the driveway that we, that we saw with the gravel pull in there that we were looking at the pictures earlier. So there's at least six or eight vehicles. But that's a 10 years ago, maybe, picture. That's no, not as no, right this, now. Is, this is about a year and a half ago. That was 2017. Uh, 2015, we can take a look at that picture. There's 2015. None of the vehicles is there now. And it's okay, been a long, can... long time. I can't even remember how long that been ago. Okay. But this look at the number of vehicles there. So right now, there's a four vehicles been there maybe for the last, I don't know, three months, maybe four. And they not like I'm not driving them. I'm not moving like three vehicles sitting. Thank you, sir. I have a motion to make. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to uphold the citation and find the amount of two hundred dollars. Second. Deer, Thomas, Deer? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Okay, case three. Case 2018-7113-231, Anders Drive. <coughs> Owner Jessica Burke. Officer Bowen. Case is a result of a citation complaint received on 10 17 2018. During inspection, I observed the following multiple vehicles parked in the yard, tires stacked on the property, multiple gar uh, garbage totes uncovered and overflowing, construction debris such as random scrap wood, multiple pallets, piles of non visible items covered in tarps, hoarding of various materials and items, uh, scattered rubbish and garbage. This property was brought before the board at the January 2019 meeting and per day fines were authorized at that time. On 4-26-19, I reinspected and found that the property was still in violation. A per day fine citation was issued on that date and was posted on the property as well as sent by first class and certified mail to the PBA listed owner and address. Photographs were taken of the citation and the property at the time the citation was posted. Since that time, our office has received multiple and ongoing complaints from neighbors regarding this property. Per the city's legal department, this property was slated to be sold at a master commissioner auction on May the 14th. Ms. Burke filed a motion to reschedule the master commissioner sale and that hearing is set for Monday, June the 24th. 
The case has been open 246 days as of this writing and the pro property remains in violation. And these, the pictures you're seeing were from um, earlier this morning. Thank you, sir. So this, this uh, property has been under violation for 226 days. We have uh, assessed a per day fine in January and also in April. Is that correct? There's only been one per day fine issued. And that was in January? No, we approved it back in January, okay. but it wasn't issued until, I think it was April, April, right, Baron? So, yeah, that's just ended. So we're requesting a new per day fine approval so has we can that, issue a new per day <coughs> Has that citation. fine been paid? Do we know no, the results of that? It has not been paid, no. It would have run out today. Right. Now, this, the property is still owned by them. It, it's been listed, but it was not sold to Master Commissioner it was, it was Yeah, it was pulled. It was pulled, and you never know why it's pulled. It could be a variety of reasons. But right now, it's, there's, they're the, property. They're the, they own the property. I have a motion to make. Be ready. Yes, sir. I make a motion to implement a, a per day fine in the amount of $100 to run for a period of 60 days. Second. Simpson, Thomas, Deer? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. All right, case number four. Excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. Do we have. Do we have someone here? Okay. No one came back. Okay, then, then therefore, um, not an appeal though. We're requesting this, so we still need to yeah, we present. Still need okay. Yeah, we still need to. Or do we need this. to? Do we need to vote on this? Yes. Okay. It still needs to be presented so you all understand what's going on. Okay, and the officer Bowen. Apologize. Okay, so that's case 2019 1563, 516 Nutwood, owners Charles and Jean Tracy, um, and Officer Chargarowski. This case is the result of a citizen complaint that was received by our office on March 12th with inspections on the 13th and 15th of March of this year. During the inspection and following, I'm sorry, during the inspection, the following violations were observed. Uh, unlicensed and inoperable um, junk vehicles for an extended period of time, accumulated brush and tree debris in the backyard, and accumulated rubbish and garbage along the driveway inside of the house. Uh, notice of violation was sent on the 15th of March of this year with a compliance reinspection date of the 26th of March of this year. On the uh, 29th, I reinspected and found that the brush and debris from the yard were removed and placed at the curb for disposal. Some of the rubbish and junk along the house and driveway were cleaned up, and several inoperable, unlicensed, and junk vehicles remained. To encourage voluntary compliance or communication regarding the vehicles, I left a door tag. I left a second door tag on the 8th of April of this year uh, after a reinspection and found that the property remained in violation. Um, on that door tag, I said that the uh, junk or inoperable vehicles had to be removed, repaired, uh, or communication made with our office to avoid a fine or citation. Um, the pictures here you see in front of you are when the notice of violation was sent with the junk vehicles, uh, rubbish, and debris in the driveway in the backyard. This is uh, about five years worth of uh, aerial photographs showing that the vehicles, uh, at least the red vehicle, has been there for at least five years in an inoperable condition. On uh, May 3rd, I inspected the property and found that it was still in violation. I issued a citation on that date and posted it on the property as well as sent it by first class and certified mail to the PVA listed owner and address. Took photographs of the citation of property at the time it was posted with a reinspection date of the 14th. Uh, property here, no, I'm sorry, I skipped one. That was the second citation. The first citation, my error was, uh, was on the 16th of April with the uh, compliance reinspection date of the 26th of April. 
Uh, so this is the time the first citation was posted. You'll see that there are three inoperable vehicles in the driveway. Uh, the red vehicle does not have tires up on blocks. And there's still rubbish and debris in the driveway. Uh, other side of the vehicle has flat tires. Black vehicle is also inoperable, has not been licensed since last year. And the SUV that was parked there also expired in December of last year. Pallets, buckets, and that sort of thing in the driveway there. Um, again, the second citation was issued on the 3rd of May, uh, posted on the property and sent to the PVA listed owner and address with a recompliance inspection of the 14th of May. Um, again, no progress at the property regarding the two vehicles in the back of the driveway. The SUV um, was not on the property at that time, but these two vehicles remained with no changes having been made. Uh, on the 31st of May, I arrived at the location to inspect and issue another citation, and I met with two young adults in the driveway. Uh, I spoke with them at length, and they explained that their mother lived at the house, uh, but she was asleep at the time and not able to speak with me. I discussed with them the violations and the actions I had taken uh, that far, and they told me that the red car farthest back in the driveway was a junk vehicle. They just wanted it um, hauled off, but they hoped to get the black vehicle running and licensed since it wasn't in as bad shape as the red vehicle was. I offered several suggestions and ideas to help them remove the junk vehicles. I mentioned it would likely not be at any cost to them to have it hauled away for scrap. And by doing so, it would be a sign of good faith to neighbors and progress uh, that I could document for my case. I offered my phone numbers and our office location so they could keep in communication with me if I could be of further assistance, but I pointed out some areas uh, of other property maintenance issues throughout their property that were not being tended to. I told them I could give them until the following Friday to show any sort of compliance, progress, uh, anything at the property, uh, or to even contact me and give me an update as to what their plan was. Um, after not hearing anything for a couple weeks, on the 11th of June, I issued the third citation, uh, found that the property was still in violation, sent it by uh, certified and first-class mail to PVA listed owner and address, posted it on the property. Uh, again, there were three vehicles, uh, the same two vehicles that are inoperable and a silver third vehicle that was also unlicensed and inoperable. Not really a whole lot of change with the red vehicle, still on blocks, same with the black vehicle, and neither of those light, uh, I'm sorry, neither of those vehicles were displaying valid license plates. Today is the uh, 25th of June, and the case has been open 105 days. Uh, property remains in violation. Uh, I've had no contact from the property owner or anyone at the property. Um, I have continued to receive complaints, and I believe that there's a neighbor here as well uh, to speak on behalf of the property. Um, but there have been no positive changes made, and the property remains in violation. Brad, I have a question. In looking at one of those uh, pictures up close to the garage, uh, all the paint seems to be off of the wood. Is that not uh, a concern of ours? It, it is. Uh, they have a lot of peeling paint. That was one of the things I spoke with the two uh, younger folks um, in May about, as well as their gutters uh, have... Um, pretty much a, a garden growing out of them. Uh, there's some other property maintenance issues on the overall house itself, but um, really in order to try to work with them the best and, and make the biggest improvement of an eyesore would be to remove these two vehicles and then we could certainly start working with them. But uh, is it a code violation? Absolutely, but I have not added it to the current citations because it wasn't on the original notice of violation, mostly because that started so long ago that it wasn't in as bad shape as it is now. Anyone live there? Yes, sir. Is this rental property? No, sir. I believe it's owner occupied. Okay. All right. Is, um, again, is anyone here representing this property? It, there's a, a neighbor of the property uh, from okay. the neighborhood here. Let's speak, sir. Tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth. So help you, God. State your name, sir. My name's Paul Weary. I live at 520 Nutwood Street, so I'm next door to this property. And uh, I've lived there for eight years. I've got a wife. I've got an 11-year-old boy and a one-year and nine-month-year-old daughter. And um, there's kids playing all the time up and down the street. I don't know what kind of stuff comes in and out of that house, but it's 
mostly what we recognize as they sleep during the day and they stay up all night. And it just shows that they, they're not taking care of their property. You look at all the other houses up and down the street, everybody's houses are neat, clean, trim, up to date, painted, none, no mold, no peeling paint. You know, everybody on Nutwood pretty well keeps their house in, in, in decent shape. And um, it's just become a, a burden that, that I'm sick of looking at, to be honest with you. And um, I have some pictures of the backyard. Of course, I'm, I'm the adjacent property owner. Their stuff grows over into my backyard. I ask them to do something about it. They don't do anything about it. So I'll go on the other side and I'll just cut it out. I mean, that's, you know, there, there was a tree that fell across my front driveway and I purposely left it there for almost two weeks. I was on vacation for one week and I left there for another week and they never cleaned it up. So I went out there and got my chainsaw out, and cleaned it up. And the, the young girl that you had spoke with, her and her friends was sitting out front watching me clean the tree up and didn't even offer to help with picking any of the limbs up or anything. So uh, I've just had my fill and I, I'd, I'd love to see some improvement to it. And I guarantee you all the neighbors around us are more than glad I, I circulated some paperwork to everybody to see if they'd be here but obviously I was the only one that made it but uh, I just I appreciate y'all bringing this up it's just uh, if you would uh, could you give the board a little information on the the ongoing parking on the yard problem and and sometimes <coughs> that there's however many cars are there all night long and so and usually at, at night time they'll roll in about six o'clock and there'll be anywhere from six to eight cars parked all over the yard and sometimes some of those vehicles go away usually i leave for work at 5 30 or 6 in the morning and there will still be cars parked in the driveway and not to mention that some of the vehicles have had profanity on them for multiple days and when i say profanity i'm curse words that aren't pretty and when there's children that are out riding skateboards and playing ball in the street and it just breaks my heart that I see a little boy ride by a truck that says has cuss word on it. he has to go home to ask his mother what does this mean you know I just I know they have freedom of speech and everything but it's just not respectful to the other members of, of that street in our neighborhood so um, anything else Brad that you'd like me to touch on no, I, I, one of the concerns um, that, that Mr. Wary just shared was part of the initial complaint about parking on the yard and and profanity on the vehicles and that sort of thing. Unfortunately, though, the majority of those things are happening after business hours, so I haven't witnessed any of those things, and unfortunately, they're not part of this case. Um, but Mr. and Ms. Wary have, have pictures of those goings on um, and, and also have the non-emergency police number and that sort of thing to, to contact them. But uh, I just uh, wanted the board to understand that there's more going on after business hours that's, that's not being presented as well. Um, that's kind of an overall blighting issue at the property. You have pictures of the backyard? Yes, I do. You mind if I, or? Yeah. I can. <coughs> yeah. Our policeman, have you, you know where this place is? If you think about it, you may want to share it with somebody, you know. We've had multiple patrols run. Um, my wife, um, her brother is actually a Bowling Green police officer, so. But we've called the non-emergency number and he has ran patrols in our area before, simply when there has been a larger group of people that we don't think are doing what they need to be doing outside and I mean the worst part is it's in the front yard on the road you know I mean uh, it, it, it gets old you know especially everybody else minds their own business and keeps their stuff up and they don't have any respect for everybody else's places and their being so we dropped a couple hints <laughs> so 
sir. Sir, I believe that's it. <clears throat> so we appreciate it. Sorry, all, sorry so. for your inconvenience, but, but thank you for helping us. Thank you all. Appreciate y'all's help with this. Jeff, what, what's the maximum per day fine we can do on this? Dollars a day. All right. Pardon me, I'm sorry. <clears throat> by by state statute, it's $100 a day to run for a period of 60 days. That's that's pretty much what we're limited to. Is that correct? A motion to implement a per day fine in the amount of $100 to run for a period of 60 days. And I second that motion. Thomas Simpson. Deer? Yes. Simpson? Yes. Thomas? Yes. Okay. There are any other um, any other items before the board? Let, let me say one thing. If yes. I, I don't know if I'm out of order or not, but Mr. Sneed, if you need some help uh, in working through what we're going through, we can get that help for you. Uh, but it, it's that got to be taken care of, all right? And uh, we're not pointing toward you or, or anybody like that. You've seen the other issues we've looked at tonight, and that's the way we have to work. I was here today as uh, you finding me for something 10 years ago, five, six years ago. As of today, that property is not looking like that. They're not looking back to, on the letters that I have received from his office that's not the case that I was here. That's all these pictures brought up before they sent me a, a violation. I corrected it. They come inspected. They never find me. But as of what he's finding me as of right now, you just pursued for the past 10 years. Like I said, as of today, and as of the reason I'm here today, why he brought me up here, it's none of that is in that in, in these letters that I have it here, in this fine. Okay, I so, just wanted to explain to you that we were trying to help you and want we'll, we'll to make sure that you understand. I understand, but that's what I'm saying. Uh, the, the vehicles, there is no vehicles in the grass. That vehicle, they was parked maybe there that, that time, the couple uh, pictures that showing the vehicles, they was parked there. That was five, six years ago. And that was correct the next day, they was not there. They was there maybe just that day when they, you know, c come by. And you, but what he's telling me is, that, like I said, there's a four vehicles of right now, none of them are in the grass as of today, as of past, I don't know, year maybe, uh, it's been really just the trailers in the backyard. There is a couple of trailers that I do have in the backyard. Like I said, I can move them up front if you all want me to. Mr. But, Seed, but there's no vehicles in the grass. A suggestion would be is to get back with our code enforcement officers if you have any confusion at all regarding what we're what we what you've been fined and uh, I, we'll, everything we'll, everything they asked I, I corrected it in the past but what I'm being fined for it's it, it's not you know the pictures brought up from 10 years ago they have nothing to do with this letter with this uh, fine I mean like I said it, I, I corrected it every time in the past I corrected the stuff and and this don't look near to that as of right now those older pictures if I may those older pictures from when I first we I first had complaints first you. first time was about parking that, that truck right there is on your property right see, now. I have a it's fence at least five years there and the fence you know it's not showing on those pictures that was brought up here before the junk that was showed before the fence was put up it's all gone it's all cleaned up it was a porch <laughs> up there I cleaned that up uh, almost two years ago I cleaned up but I was trying to build me a garage and, and the platform is built for a garage. I was waiting for, uh, like I said, for surveyors trying to build me a garage. I mean, I'll re-inspect that property, and actually he owns the one right, that blue house right behind 14, uh, 12, yeah. 12 yeah. and he received a notice of violation the other day because there's the vehicles that there is are no vehicle. On Gentlemen, there that are registered. Gentlemen, yes. we've already addressed this issue. Thank you both for being here. And, there is no um, vehicle in my property on the grass if, as of right now. Sir. As, as I, I don't know what to do. Sir, this meeting, we're getting ready to adjourn this meeting. This meeting, okay. has, we've already okay, addressed but, this issue. But like I, said, <clears throat> I don't know what to do. There is no vehicle if that he's sending me a letter. My suggestion would be 
let's get back to planning and zoning and let's try to work this out okay it was I understand I, I went, I, but we're I not going to but we, we can't get that done here tonight I know I, but I don't know what to do that's what I'm trying to that's get. what that's but, why you're going to get back with them and they're going to tell you no exactly in, again in what to do since if there's some confusion I don't know I, thank you sir I have a motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Yes. He has a question. Pardon me? He said he has a question for yeah. about something. This weighs in on anything as far as the, the case 1563, the 516 number. I don't believe my wife saw somewhere where they hadn't paid the city property taxes in over five years. I don't know if that needs to be taken up here or can y'all direct me or tell me who would need to. Are you just wanting to, just to see if they've paid? No, they them? have not. That, okay. That's what I understand. So I don't know if, I don't know who that, who needs it, I guess. Just to see about getting it foreclosed on maybe or something or I guess what I, I'm just I what's know, your question if that matters to you all <laughs> I would think that the city would want its money for right the property tax and I know they mm -hmm. haven't paid it so right just to right um, well the treasurer's office collects taxes and the legal department would foreclose on a property if the amount is significant enough okay so talk to them the legal department might be your next okay step on that if okay. you want to see what they're going to do okay. if they're going to take steps okay from thank that you. point yeah thank you uh -huh. we have a motion on the floor uh did i hear a second yes. uh, okay simpson and thomas dear yes simpson yes thomas yes. 